In this video I want to show you how you can make your own DIY amplifier, very simple one for driving a speaker. Why do you need that one? Well this is a nice loudspeaker that I have and it even has a plug that fits into a headphone jack. But there's a problem with this amplifier, uh, with the speaker. There's a pro but there's a problem there's a problem with the speaker. The speaker is not amplified. That means it's a passive speaker. And what I've done is I've cranked up the volume all the way up from a cassette player and I've experimented with the buttons to get the best volume. And now if we turn on the cassette player, we can have a listen how loud it's going to be. So if I go close to the speaker, ah, come on. <laughs> So you want to test how good you can hear or something and this is why in this video I'm going to show you how you can build a very simple class A audio amplifier for amplifying such a device as the cassette player that you can have a good volume that fills your room. These are the parts required for building the simple amplifier. You need a high power MOSFET like the RFP250, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, two 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, a big resistor in terms of power it can handle, it's a 5.6 ohms resistor, but you can also use two 10 ohm resistors and switch them in parallel, two 10k resistors, they have the color code brown, black, orange, a heatsink for cooling the transistor or MOSFET, but you will require a larger heatsink, this one will work for a short demonstration or a few minutes, but the transistor slash MOSFET will get quite hot and so you want to use a bigger heatsink, a solderless breadboard. For connecting your audio source you will need a uh, wire that connects to a headphone jack and has these, I think it's RCA or so, connectors on the other side. Then you will need six single uh, alligator clips for building, I mean for connecting the amplifier to your power supply, speaker and audio source. These are the parts required for building. When you build your amplifier, you will also need some parts that help your amplifier to go for good performance. You will need a BC548 transistor, you can also use BC547 or 2N3904. You will also need some of these parts for getting a good performance from your amplifier. This is the driver for the final stage. You will need a BC548 transistor, also will work BC547 or 2N3904. A 2N3904 will be 180 degrees reverse in this solarless breadboard later. You will also need um, some capacitors, these are 100 nanofarads or 104. Some resistors, two of them, the lower ones are a 2.2K, red, red, red is the color code, and the upper one is a 220K which has the color code red, red, yellow. Alternatively to these resistors, you can also use other values if you don't have them available. I will show you which one you can use in a couple of seconds. Now I want to show you how you can prepare the parts for this amplifier. First we start with the 10K resistor. What we are going to do first is we are going to bend the wires and second we are going to cut the wires so that they are around 5 millimeters on each side. We keep the cut wires. So this is the resistor with the bent wires. Now we take the side cutting pliers and now we cut the wires 5 millimeter. So now I'm going to cut the wires on each side we want to have around 5 millimeters left. So, now we have two parts. We have the resistor with the cut wires. You can see it on both sides. And what is left over is this wire. So we have two of them. Next, we take the 1000 microfarad capacitor, one of them. So we bend the wires like that. And what we want to do is we want to get it to the solar spreadboard. So the capacitor shall fit on the solar spreadboard. So what we are going to do is we are going to bend the wires again. Let's check if it fits into the solar spreadboard and yes it does. So we just can put it into the solar spreadboard and we can put it right here. It's important that the minus sign is showing on the lower side where are the lower numbers 
and the plus sign is showing up here where the higher numbers are. Okay. The next part we are going to prepare is the 10 microfarad capacitor. All you have to do is bend the wires on a 10 microfarad capacitor like that. And this is pretty much what you want and then you are done with your capacitor. So this is the other 1000 microfarad capacitor and all we are going to do is we are going to bend the wires in a 90 degree angle from the capacitor. So this is the second prepared 1000 microfarad capacitor. We have already installed the 1000 microfarad capacitor and now we are going to install one wire bridge. So this is the wire from the resistor and now we are going to bend the wire like this so that it looks around like that. And now we place it in the solder spreadboard like that. One, two, three and there is this wire. The next thing we are going to put in is the MOSFET. So this is where the MOSFET is placed. So this is now where the MOSFET is installed. The next part we are going to take is the 10K resistor which we previously cut. We bent the wires a little bit and now we place it in the solder desk breadboard. So this is how the resistor has been installed. You can very well see it. Next part I am going to install is the 5.6 ohm resistor. And what I am going to do is I am going to install it like that. Here is one connector from the 5.6 ohms and here is the other connector from the 5.6 ohms. Okay, this is how you build it in into your solderless breadboard. So you can see it, you have to bend it like that um, because it will fit in here. So see, so this is where this bent wire from the resistor, that's the wire that's left over from the resistor and it goes in here. That's from the 10K resistor, that's the wire from the 10K resistor. And now we take the 10K resistor which is left over, you can see it here, and now we bend it again and where we want to connect it so we want to connect it from here to minus. This is how it's bent and then it has to fit from here to here. So this is the other 10K resistor, this one, and it goes from this hole here to this hole there. Now we take the 1000 microfarad and we place it here. This is where the loudspeaker later gets connected. Now we can still bend it so this is pretty much how it should look. This is the 1000 microfarad capacitor. And now we take the 10 microfarad capacitor and we place it here where the 10K is. So that's the 10 microfarad and this is where our audio source gets connected. Okay. Now the amplifier is built. What you also want to install is the heatsink, which I can not really do well with the place I have built in front of the camera. But this is what we want to do also. So we want to install the heat sink. So this is how the heat sink looks if it's installed. So now I've built the amplifier and I'm quite excited if it will work or not. Here I have connected my power supply. So the red and black wire goes to my 12 volt power supply. And here I have the yellow wire which goes from the audio input to the inner connector from my RCA connector and from the outer connector there goes my green wire and if you follow it you will see it goes to the lower pin from the 10K. There are two wires, the white ones, one goes to the 10K also and the other one goes to this electrolytic capacitor. So if you follow these wires you will end up on the loudspeaker's input. Ok, I am very very excited about this amplifier, as you can see I am turning down the volume a little bit so it's not that loud, so it's on minimum volume now. And now I'm going to turn it on. It should draw some current. Okay, it draws current around 260 milliamps, which is in the range where I decided or where I wanted it to be. It's working as it should. Now I press play and increase the volume and we will have a nice listen to our music. It should be easy loud enough to, fu to fill the whole room with music. So I turn up the volume. Ah, I can hear it. Uh, kidding? I can't crank it up anymore, it's, it's on maximum, that's the highest volume I can align. And it's louder than before, definitely, but have a listen. You kidding? So I took my parts, invested my time and built this amplifier and it's not working. <laughs> what? Everything is hooked up correct, it draws current, this audio source is playing and it's not working. <sighs> Wasted time. Nope. I can tell you something. 
about those people who are interested in electronics and this is why I made this intentionally because I want to teach you something also what we have here is a so-called collector circuit or in this case since we're using a MOSFET it's called drain circuit the drain circuit will amplify quite some current it has enough current to drive the speaker and let it get really loud trust me but there's a problem the so-called drain or collector circuit has a high current amplification but it only has a very low voltage amplification it's even around somewhere of one so the low voltage that goes out from this uh, headphone jack which is maybe a couple of hundred millivolts goes directly amplified by one to the loudspeaker well there are still a couple of hundred millivolts only but it's louder because this adds some current to it which this Walkman can't provide okay so you could see that it works now but there are some other problems because to the low voltage amplification it's very silent because there's not much voltage on the speaker and so the speaker isn't really getting very loud what can we do well in the beginning of the video I showed you some additional parts and we are going to use those to, to build a voltage amplifier so we have two stages the first which we are going to build will be the voltage amplifier which amplifies the voltage from this cassette player to a high level and the other one is the current amplifier which adds some power if you want to call it like that to your voltage in the next step I'm going to show you how I can build this voltage amplifier and then you will have a well working amplifier so now let's prepare parts for the additional stage so we bend the transistor like this so the wires are bent on the transistor and they are bent like that see so this is how they are bent so there have to be four holes from the solar spreadboard between each leg four holes from here to here and four holes from here to here now let's take the 220k which has red red yellow or not a resistor which I showed you before but it has to be the high volume now let's just bend the wires and now you're done with the resistor now let's take one of the 2.2k which has the color code red 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 so now let's bend the wires like this okay now let's bolt it into the solder the spreadboard take the transistor so on 15 is one connector and the other connectors are here or let's let's put it in like this so this is how the transistor gets pulled in into the solder the spreadboard you can see it plus now let's take the 10 microfarad capacitor and connect it to the transistor so this is how you bend the 10 microfarad lead and then you put it back in I'm doing it off camera so well it simply has to be here this is the 10 microfarad capacitor now you take the 220k resistor so this is where the 220k belongs see it belongs here so this is where the 2.2k goes and the other pin goes to the connection from the transistor so now I take the other 2.2k and it goes from the middle pin from the transistor to an open spot on the circuit board so now we have the 2 times 100 nanofarads these are both 100 nanofarads now installed keep in mind that you don't have a short circuit so this is how the amplifier looks if it's built and completed